What's up guys, my name's Stu, and today we're going to be looking at my Baul Anti-Proton Cannon Scatter Volley build on the Mirror Warship. The Mirror Warship is a very popular ship largely due to its starship trait, Terran Goodbye. If you've watched some of my other videos, you've probably noticed I use Terran Goodbye quite a lot. It's on pretty much all of my DPS builds, and that's because its crit chance buff is just too good not to have. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I hate buying ships just for the sake of their consoles or traits, especially lockbox ships like this because they're single character unlocks. I like to get some playtime out of my ships, you know, beyond the single ninth rule run to unlock the starship trait. That's why this is going to be the first of a number of build videos for ships that are typically only popular for their console or starship trait. Here she is, the Mirror Warship. This is a unique ship for two reasons. One, it's a constitution class that isn't some kind of cruiser, and two, it's bridge officer seating. It has two commander level seats, one engineering and one tactical. It also has a lieutenant commander intel seat, meaning it's really good for energy weapon builds. The only way I could love this ship more is if they added miracle worker to that engineering seat. Since it has a commander tactical seat, I decided to go with a cannon scatter volley build on this ship. So in the forward weapon slots are a bunch of Baul anti-proton dual heavy cannons. The refracting proc from Baul weapons makes them really nice for scatter volley. Not only is everything in the cone of damage going to be hit by your main weapons, but the refractions bouncing around all over the place will cause even more damage. Also in the forward weapons is the dark matter quantum torpedo from the Discovery Reputation. Not only is this a hard hitting weapon on its own, but since I'm also using the console from this set, I get the two piece bonus, which is a really nice stacking crit severity buff. Down here are my usuals for an energy weapon build, the colony deflector for the crit chance and crit severity buffs, the competitive reputation engine for the speed buffs, a deuterium stabilized warp core for the reduced weapons power cost, though non-engineers would benefit more from the Terran task force warp core because of its buff to maximum power levels, and the discovery reputation shield for its damage buff to enemy shields. In the back are a pair of Baul anti-proton turrets, and the Baul omni beam from the Lobi store. Having an Omni Beam on a cannon build might seem a little weird, but this one's set bonus is what makes Baul weapons work so well. Not only does it double the damage of the refractions, but it also gives you an extra one per shot. In the devices, first we have energy amplifiers for the bonus damage to my energy weapons, deuterium surplus for the speed buff, red matter capacitor for the buff to my power levels, and Kobayashi Maru transponder for the random buffs. In the universal slot, first we have Lorca's custom fire control for its buffs to crit chance, weapons power, and shield penetration. Also for that stacking crit severity buff with the Dark Matter Torpedo, which I talked about earlier. Next are the DPRM and the Domino for their massive buffs to bonus damage. Alliance Tactics because it buffs anti-proton damage and crit severity. Also its click ability does a nice amount of bonus damage and shield penetration for a short time, and does a nice amount of anti-proton damage itself. Enhanced Plasma Manifold because I decided to incorporate elements of the Unlimited Power build into this too because it does have that intel seat. I'll go over a little bit how that works in this video, but if you want to see the full explanation, I'll link that video down in the description. Next are my two Lobi Store consoles, Bioneural Infusion Circuits for its impressive crit severity buff, and the Baul Set console because of its buff to anti-proton damage and because it's the other half of the set bonus. And to finish up in the tactical consoles, the Fakiri Torment Engine for its buffs to non-hazard damage over time effects, and a bunch of vulnerability locators from the Fleet Spire that buff anti-proton damage and crit chance. In the specializations, I went with Intel as my primary to give me access to space flanking, and Temporal as my secondary to give me access to Entropic Rider. Entropic Rider adds some damage over time whenever I fire my weapons, and that damage over time is buffed by the Fakiri Torment Engine. In the personal space traits, first we have Adaptive Offense, which is a stacking crit chance buff that turns into a crit severity buff and back. Context is for Kings for the bonus damage buff. Fleet Coordinator for the bonus damage buff based on your team size. Fragment of AI Tech for the buff to your energy weapons based on your control expertise. Innocuous for the small buff to crit severity and the reduction to threat generation. Inspirational Leader for a chance to buff most of your starship skills for a short time. Intel Agent Attaché to reduce the cooldown time on your captain's abilities, Superior Cannon Training for the bonus damage to my cannons, Terran Targeting Systems for the crit severity buff, and Unconventional Systems to shave some time off my Universal Consoles. In the Starship Traits, I'm using Withering Barrage to extend the duration of my cannon scatter volley by 4 seconds, Emergency Weapon Cycle to reduce my weapons power cost and buff my firing cycle haste, Overpowered and Overgun, which does basically the same thing except its duration is based off of my global crit chance, Terran Goodbye for its stacking buff to crit chance and accuracy, which actually comes off of this ship. Next is Onboard Dilithium Recrystallizer, which gives me bonus damage for every non-weapon subsystem I have maxed out. This is why I'm using the Enhanced Plasma Manifold. It buffs those subsystems, helping me get the most out of that bonus damage. Since I need my auxiliary power it is, I'm not using Ox to Bat, so therefore I'm using Improved Photonic Officer for my Bridge Officer cooldowns. I realize a lot of people probably don't want to go with this power-based setup. It really is best suited for engineers. I'll go through some other options in the additional notes section of the video before the ISE. In the Space Reputation Traits is my usual setup for an energy weapon build. 
advanced targeting systems for the crit severity buff, precision for the critical chance buff, Tyler's duality also for crit chance, magnified firepower for bonus weapon damage, and controlled countermeasures for more bonus weapon damage against controlled targets. Now on to the bridge officer seating. In the universal intel seat, I'm using a science officer equipped with tractor beam 1 to proc unconventional systems, photonic officer 1 to lower my bridge officer cooldowns, and override subsystem safeties 3 to buff my power levels. This ability right here is the whole reason why I decided to go with the unlimited power build on this. In the Ensign Universal seat, I'm using Beam Overload 1 to buff the Omni Beam. In the Ensign Tactical, I'm using Kima Sight Lace Weaponry 1 for some extra radiation damage to my weapons. In the Commander Tactical seat, I've got Distributed Targeting 1. This is to get some additional damage on enemies surrounding my target. Torpedo Spread 2 to buff the Dark Matter Torpedo. Attack Pattern Beta for the debuff. And Cannon Scatter Volley 3 because, you know, it's a cannon build. In the Commander Engineering seat, first I have Engineering Team 1. This is for when OSS knocks out one of my subsystem powers. Let it go 2 for the debuff. Emergency Power to Weapons 3 to buff my energy weapons and to trigger Emergency Weapon Cycle. And Directed Energy Modulation 3 for some extra shield and armor penetration for my energy weapons. I'm also using a Duty Officer that adds an additional effect to this ability, but more on that in a sec. In the Duty Officers, first we have 19 of 47 and 24 of 47. These are also part of the unlimited power build setup. They have a small chance to set my power levels to maximum for 5 seconds. They also have secondary effects that trigger off of Miracle Worker abilities, but since this ship doesn't have any Miracle Worker seating, I'm not getting anything out of those. Next are a pair of projectile officers, one that buffs my crit chance and one that buffs my crit severity every time I fire a torpedo. Though with a high firing rate of cannon scatter volley, you could easily swap these out for energy weapon versions of these duty officers as well. I only went with the projectile duty officers because I have very rare versions of these. Next is that duty officer I was talking about for directed energy modulation, Mariam Francis Dulmer. He's a unique systems engineer that reduces my weapons power cost by 200% for 8 seconds every time I use directed energy modulation. And lastly is 42 of 47 to give me a little extra help getting some of my bridge officers to minimum cooldown because I'm only using Photonic Officer 1. Now, as I said earlier, I know not everyone wants to run the unlimited power build. It requires some unique and sometimes really expensive things to pull it off. For something more conventional, you'll probably want to run an Ox to Bat build for your cooldowns. That means you'll need to make room for three technician duty officers so you can just swap out the liberated Borg Doffs for those. You'll also have to make room for Ox to Bat in your bridge officer seating. You'll definitely want to keep emergency power to weapons and engineering team if you want to keep override subsystem safeties. So you can swap out Let It Go or Directed Energy Modulation for Ox to Bat. If you ditch directed energy modulation, you'll free up another duty officer seat because you won't need that systems engineer anymore either. He's really expensive, but if you can get your hands on 27 of 47, he'd be a perfect addition to this build. Fortunately, you only need the one ox to bat. Instead of a second ox to bat, you can substitute in photonic officer 2 and go for a half bat build. You'll have to downgrade to override subsystem safeties too, but that shouldn't be a big deal. This will also free up two of your starship traits. Without those subsystem power buffs, there's no reason to run onboard dilithium or crystallizer. And with ox to bat, there's no reason to run improved photonic officer. Promise of Ferocity and Strike from Shadows would both be great on this build. They're both from Sea Store ships, so they're pretty easy to obtain. Improved Critical Systems from the Temporal Recruitment event would also be good. But if you have access to them, Weapon Emitter Overdrive and Ruin of Our Enemies would also be really good in this build. Without onboard Dilithium Recrystallizer, there's no reason to keep Enhanced Plasma Manifold. Instead, you could swap in Tachyokinetic Converter or really anything that buffs your crit chance. That should be everything for a more conventional setup for this build, so let's move on to the ISE and then the parse.
459k, that is absolutely fantastic for Cannon Scatter Volley. I am very pleased with that. Of course, it helps when Augie's not in one of his crazy torpedo boats, so he can leave some DPS for the rest of us. Going through the player analysis, I was a bit surprised with how little damage that Aligned Bombardment did. I expected a bit more out of that, though part of its value is the bonus damage you get from the click, so this might not need to be replaced. Distributed targeting was a bit of a disappointment too. It's never been a heavy hitter, but this is still lower than I expected. I might rearrange that Commander Tactical Seat a bit, so instead of Distributed Targeting 1, I'll have Torp Spread 1, and then put Attack Pattern Beta and Attack Pattern Omega in the next two slots. And of course leave Cannon Scatter Volley 3 where it is. I think having both Beta and Omega will be more beneficial than having Distributed Targeting. So yeah, that's the build. I hope it helps you putting together your own Mirror Warship build, or really any Cannon Scatter Volley build. Big thanks to Big Papatar for setting up this ISC during his livestream. I'll link his Twitch channel down below, you should definitely give him a follow. Please be sure to like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications, you know, all that YouTube stuff down below. I really do appreciate it. Anyway, my name's Stu, and I'm wearing a different shirt because I had to re-record this outro. I know I've done this bit before, but it's the truth. I really did have to re-record this outro. That intro was from like two days ago. Nothing I can do about it.